During yesterday's press rally in Abuja, and we have had evidence for the importation of agent provocateurs who were mobilized to the protest routes and grounds to cause violence and unleash mayhem against peacefully assembled and protesting Nigerians. God is, however, always a step ahead of the enemies of the workers and Nigerian people. That was also one of the reasons we had to restructure the second day of the nation. Hello, guys. I hope this video meets you well. Guys, eh, I say it be like, say, it day easy for Satan himself to repent to change than for Tifnu Tif Pablo Escobar to change. It's true. Guys, eh? Labour Party Shema, not Labour Party rather, Nigeria Labour Congress Shema. He cries out how they went on protest in Nubu, rented, you know, rented out to come and disturb the, the, their rally, their peaceful rally, peaceful protest. Came to, you see, all of us were shouting that that this guy, Tinubu, and everything, you know, uh, if you vote, you're going to lose your right. Many didn't believe us now it has happened. Please, guys, try watch this video to the end and make sure you share it, please. So, Nigeria will say thank you. Who, who don't earn a wage of even 5,000 were the people that said all is well. And they were the people that came out and were shouting. Some other people whose school fees cannot be paid are some of the people saying all is well. Some other people who claim to be representing geopolitical zones, whether Hanese, whether Fenifere, are the people that are saying all is well. But for those of you that decided to identify with us, to say things the way they are, we want to welcome you to this. As you all are aware, the neck of Congress convened on Friday, February 16, 2024, and looked at some decisive action and response, and widespread suffering, hunger, and insecurity experienced by Nigerians due to government policies, particularly the hike in price of petroleum products, which affected any other and every other activity in the country. In, the, in a unanimous decision, we decided to organize a two-day nationwide protest. We, acknowledging the overwhelming success of the first day of the protest in achieving its objectives, the next session we convened yesterday and decided to suspend street actions for the second day and ordered that the protest continues nationwide through simultaneous press conferences and activities restricted to <coughs> all our sectors in the 36 states of the Federation. Furthermore, the NEC extended the ultimatum by two weeks. During this period, the government is expected to implement all agreements reached, in, on, reached on the October 2nd meeting. It is important that members of the public be aware of the grievous threats against the leadership of the NLC, aimed at intimidating and harassing us into abandoning our choice of democratic expression through the, through the nationwide protests. We were threatened with all manners of consequences that would be meted out to us if we went ahead with the protests. We were, however, not deterred. As lifting the heavy yoke of our suffering, of suffering upon Nigerian workers and masses left us with no option than to press on. During yesterday's press rally in Abuja, and we have had evidence for the importation of agent provocateurs who were mobilized to the protest routes and grounds to cause violence 
and unleash mayhem against peacefully assembled and protesting Nigerians. God is, however, always a step ahead of the enemies of the workers and Nigerian people. That was also one of the reasons we had to restructure the second day of the nationwide protest. You may have noticed that almost all the routes to our office has been militarized this morning. It took you know, a lot of detail for us to assess our offices. These are not things expected in democratic societies. Comrades, in conclusion, we want to reiterate that if the government fails to comply within the specified time frame, the NEC will convene again, decide on further lines of action. The NLC remains steadfast in its commitment to defending and promoting the interests of Nigerian workers and the downtrodden masses. We will not succumb to intimidation. We will not yield to harassment. We will keep the interests of Nigerian workers and the people at the heart of our actions all of the time. God bless you. The gentleman of the press, you have heard it. Finally, I will evade the whole questions bordering around TUC because they are not here. Ordinarily, but for purposes of clarity and that uh, we need to know, I will try to attempt them. The NLC has been a labor center from 1977-78. They are not contesting with anybody on power, on rivalry, or even occupying the industrial relations space. Whatever we do is independent. And each time we talk, we say the NLC neck. That's our organ. And when we go there, like yesterday, when they directed us what to do, as SNAC elected officials, we obey them. We will not come up with our own agenda. If we want to hold a meeting with government or any of the labor affiliates, it will be based on the direction given to us by our highest decision-making body, NEC, which is the highest before delegates conference, before national delegates conference. And that one comes up every four years. So we rely on it. If I, the NEC have decided that we should take an action tomorrow, we we'll take an action tomorrow. We can look for those who have the same feeling and action and take the action jointly. But the NEC cannot mandate us, you know, to go and look for people who will help us in this instance. There are about 54 affiliates of the NLC. Each and every one of them acts independently. If you check Nupeng, when they want to take action, they act independently. The NLC can never say, Nupeng, since you are under us, why did you take the action? Never. The NUT, when they want to take action, don't under NLC. They can't, NLC cannot query them for taking action. The same thing with Nui, all the unions. So that independence is respected even when you are under a center. But I'm not sure NLC is under any center. NLC is not under any center. We may decide to collaborate with anybody, any organization, the NGOs, the human rights community to take any action. But we don't owe them any explanation on action we decide to take. Any organization we decided to collaborate with, we can. And those organizations can still take their own action. We will not query them. So I needed to take this widely because of these questions being asked. You know, and in signing all those agreements, which we alluded to, I signed for NLC. People for government signed, other groups signed. It's a joint agreement. Everybody signed for the organization. That does not make you perpetually, you know, bound, bound by 
maybe the Minister of Labor or whoever, because they signed the same agreement with you. Never. So we signed on behalf of our organization and we take decisions when we discover that such agreements have been violated. I can only speak for the NLC. So I needed to say this because somebody talked about a joint agreement. We can collaborate to take decisions, take actions. But instead of us to work together and die in collusion and suffocation, we work separately and still exist independently. And I think it's good for people to get this now clear. But instead of us to work together and suffocate and punish our members, we prefer to work alone so that our members can breathe. Here yeah, the two, two weeks uh, extension. I will take it along with the questions on the percentage of compliance. These percentages of compliance comrades